folks, welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment Q&A session. This is a special Q&A where we have broken out a couple of the individual questions from the overall larger Q&A video. So if you are looking for the specific answer to a specific question, you've come to the right place. Flora says, although I normally don't have any problems with following the instructions for firmware updates, uh, include some, but with a three thousand dollar camera, it's nice to be able to go along with the proceedings of a Lumix expert. Why? You're welcome. And now, okay, there's kind of a long question here. The point is, he's saying, in version one point one, the flicker decrease has become available. I honestly don't know that it wasn't available before, but he's saying it is. So, okay, um, sure, I'll, I'll believe you on that. Flicker decrease has become available. What I couldn't find is, or you know, I'm just going to read the question this way because it's kind of his question is kind of weirdly worded. Um, Flores, sorry, I'm just so I'm just going to answer it here. So he's basically saying, what is Flickr decrease and how does it compare to Synchro Scan? That's that's the easy question. That okay. So let's start with Synchro Scan first of all. Synchro Scan is a feature in the camera where you can change the shutter angle or shutter speed in very very finite amounts so that you can synchronize the image, uh, synchronize the recording with an image that's being displayed on a television monitor computer screen. So if you've ever seen, you're looking at a camera screen through the camera and you see kind of a rolling shadow on the screen, that's because the frequency of the screen and the frequency of your recording are not matching up. And so you can do very fine adjustments to correct for that. Theoretically, you could also use that to adjust for flickering from overhead lights, but the lights would have to all be consistent in the same frequency. And if you've got a bunch of mixed lights, odds are they're all over the place. That may not work that well. But you, in theory, you could do it for that as well. The flicker decrease is more for the second one, but it is also more for the casual shooter. This is not a pro feature. And I say that because it is not available when you're in creative movie mode, which is the, and I really don't like that name, creative movie mode, the full proper movie mode. When you go into that movie mode, the option is not there. When you are shooting in PASM mode, so program after shutter or manual, regular mode, not the movie mode, but the regular shooting mode, and you hit the red record button, that's where this comes into play. So let me show you where it is, how it works. What I, the reason I'm always struggling with these cables is because I only have one frame rate converter in here because um, they're expensive. And these don't go 4K, and I don't want to buy anything else that's not 4K. Um, okay, let's see here. Let's go back into, let's get this set up here again so it looks cool for you guys. If you have something to look at. And let's turn that on. Okay. So now, uh, let's see here. We are in, so I'm in creative movie mode now. And if we go into here, click our decrease. Menu items can't be set. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I'm in creative movie mode. I expected it to be grayed out. Oh, it is grayed out. Flicker decrease is off. I cannot do anything with it. Okay, so now I'm going to switch the camera on the top to, let's get out of here. I'm going to switch it into just regular aperture priority shooting mode. There we go. So regular aperture priority shooting mode now. I go back into here and go back in, and now flicker decrease is there. So you have off or 1 120th, 1 100th, 1 160th, and 1 50th of a second. These are standard frequencies if you're in the US, you should be seeing this frequency of light flicker uh, in the UK or, well, in Europe, I guess, um, 150. Then where there's 25 hertz versus 30 hertz, that's, that's the difference there. And then it doubles to 100 and 120 as well if you need that faster shutter speed. The idea here is that whatever you set it to, you're forcing the camera to shoot at that shutter speed. So I set it to flicker, flicker decrease at 1 120th of a second. And if I go, let's get my display back on here, I'm in aperture priority. Let me set something so that the um, Let's see here. Let's go. We're going to leave auto ISO on here. And oh, look at that tape is getting on my screen now. It's in the way. And I'm at, uh, what am I at? 3.9. You can see, let's let's do this a little bit different. Oh, it's, oh, it's going to keep cranking the ISO to keep me under 100th. Anyway, 3.9, you see it's at 100th of a second. As soon as I hit record on the little red button, oh, I don't know if that's going to translate through. It's thinking, it's thinking. There we go. You can see it's recording. Now you see at the bottom, it's switched over to 120th of a second. You see that in the bottom left of your screen? So it has basically forced it to shoot at 120th of a second. That's what that is. So it's ideally for anti-flickering with the lights. If you're finding you're in an auto mode and it's kind of bouncing around, that will force it in there. I, you could do the same thing by going into shutter priority and setting it to 120th of a second. Um, but this way, it's just kind of a set it and forget it. Doesn't matter what mode you're in, you'll get that. So that is what the, uh, what happened to my, that is what the, um, the mode is. That is what the, what was it called again? Flicker decrease. That is what flicker decrease is.